Well, good afternoon and welcome to another Civility Public Webinar. My name is Scott Weems and I'm going to be your host for today's webinar in which we're going to showcase yet another great Civility offering, Quality Connect. I want to begin by saying thanks to all of you for joining for today's webinar. You know, we at Civility know that you folks are busy and as the old saying goes, claims wait for no man. So we appreciate you carving out time out of your schedule to learn more about this powerful tool Civility is bringing to the market. Well, in today's webinar, we are highlighting Quality Connect, a tool that's been uniquely designed for property claims reinspection programs. I will be going through and introducing you to Quality Connect, and then together we're going to walk right through an actual reinspection process and see how that looks from the reinspector standpoint. You'll get a good idea of how it works. Now, this webinar is 30 minutes long, and we have a lot of ground to cover in that short time. You know, although we're going to be able to give you a pretty good overview of Quality Connect and a good look at the how it works, we know that from experience that many of you are going to have additional questions. That's totally understandable. So depending on time, at the conclusion of the presentation, we're going to answer as many of those questions as we can. So if during the webinar a question comes to mind, you can submit those to Tucky using the chat option in the WebEx participant panel that should have popped up on the right side of your screen. All you need to do is select her name in that chat area, Tucky Wong, and then type in your question and send it. She'll be gathering those questions and then time permitting at the end of the session, she's gonna let me know what those questions are and I'll answer as many of them as possible. If I can't get to the question or maybe it's really a too detailed uh, an answer to effectively answer in this type of a venue, uh, you can either contact your account manager for those who are already Simbility customers you can call our help desk or simply email sales at civilitysolutions.com and we will be glad to get your questions answered. Okay, well with that, let's go ahead and get started. Civility has been serving the insurance marketplace for many years. And as we talk with insurance companies, one of the most common themes we hear within the realm of claims operation, that is, is the problem of indemnity leakage. Indemnity leakage has been with us ever since the first claim was filed, I'm sure, and it continues to be a concern for all carriers. Now, usually this leakage comes in the form of claims management inefficiencies typically caused by some area of weakness within the actual claims process. Now, I have heard indemnity leakage described as the difference between what your company spent and what you should have spent on a claim. I think that's a pretty good <laughs> good, accurate uh, representation of what that term means. As you can see from the screen, by the way, in 2014, leakage accounted for 18% of insurance companies' costs. That, my friends, is not a small number. Now, because leakage is a challenge for every insurance company, most want to make sure they control the claims process as closely as they can to limit the amount of leakage. That's only understandable. Typically, a carrier accomplishes this by making sure their claims staff are not only correctly assessing damage and, you know, accurately documenting that damage and generating a, an accurate repair estimate. But oftentimes, this challenge is addressed through effective training on both the adjusting and estimating best practices, as well as training their adjusters on how to effectively use the estimating tools. That's almost as important as making sure they know how to fulfill those good estimating best practices. Now that's all fine and good, but the reality is, is there's still some leakage and the measurement of this leakage and how effective the adjuster training has been can only be assessed through effective quality assurance programs. Now these programs themselves have challenges of their own and I think you guys probably know about that. So through our discussions with insurance companies, we've identified a few of those challenges. Now first, one of, the, one of the first ones that comes up is the fact that during the QA process, when a claim's being reinspected, it typically needs to have the flexibility to review the file even before the claim itself is closed. So oftentimes a claim may be still open, maybe they're waiting for receipts to come in or whatever, but they still need to go do the reinspection. This should not stop the QA process from happening. Secondly, claims need to be reinspected in an integrated way so the notations and edits can be recorded and tracked right inside the claim, not outside of the claim on some separate system that of course requires extra and additional work by the reinspector and they have to use multiple systems. That makes it a little bit more complicated. 
Now, thirdly, this QA data must be available for analytical purposes in order to really accurately ascertain what's happening within the claims. And of course, that is going to identify where the leakage is happening. This is so important to insurance companies because, hey, without it, a tremendous amount of additional work must be done to determine the results of these QA inspections. You have to be able to get that data and it has to be able to talk to you and give you the information you need so you can then adapt and change those estimating processes. So we listened carefully to you and the result was the powerful reinspection tool Quality Connect. Now from the beginning of the design of Quality Connect, we knew that it had to be a dynamic tool that was flexible, customizable by the customer, and that accurately tracked all reinspection changes. At the same time, by the way, we wanted to create a tool that was intuitive for the reinspectors to use and gave the carriers easy access to the reinspection data, again, for the ability to go in and generate reports and evaluate the reinspection results. So Quality Connect is truly a reinspection tool. It begins with the ability to set up and customize the reinspection data from your company's best practices. Then claims can be individually or randomly selected within Claims Connect and then assigned to the reinspectors. I'll show you how that works. The reinspectors will receive the claim within mobile claims where the reinspection itself is performed. Now the reinspector can go through a claim and review the entire claim electronically and then make changes to areas such as say the loss summary and particularly the diagrams and the estimates where most of the leakage on typical claims will occur. Now each time an issue is discovered, the reinspector can also within Claims Connect, and excuse me, Quality Connect, can identify the document, the mistake, they can correct the mistake, and then make the notes as to why they made the change, and even give suggestions for how the adjuster could have avoided the mistake or made a better decision in the first place. All of these changes are entirely confidential, by the way, and can be reviewed before the adjuster is informed of the reinspection results. That was another thing that was identified in our research. Finally, all of these reinspection results from all claims reinspected using Quality Connect flow automatically into the business intelligence module inside of Claims Connect. This allows an insurance carrier to accurately analyze reinspection results, make better decisions about how to fine tune that claims process, and or maybe determine areas where the training needs to be addressed. That is the purpose of quality of the Quality Assurance Program and Quality Connect's uh, primary design. So that's a little bit of the background into the design and how it's set up. We're going to spend the majority of the rest of our time actually going through and doing a demonstration of this, and we're going to begin inside of Claims Connect because this is where the setup is done and this is where claims are assigned for reinspection. So here is Claims Connect. Many of you that are customers obviously recognize this, this user interface. And I'm logged into a company called CNM Insurance as a user named Alan Young. Now what we're going to do to begin with is just show you a little bit of the background and some of the setup that's done to show you the customizations that can be done on a tool such as Quality Connect. Under the administration tab, you will notice in the user accounts area, we have the ability to go through and create users and assign them as reinspectors. So in this case, we have George Gruden, who's a reinspector. This is how it's going, this is a primary of importance because of course, without assigning them as reinspectors, how are you going to know who to get, the, get these claims to? And the system is going to identify them as now being able to have access to Quality Connect. The other thing you'll notice is under the claim defaults area, if you scroll down here, you'll notice there's now a new module here or area called Quality Connect Reinspection Change Reasons. This is again as part of the customization. Each of these items can be created, and we can either give you a default set, or you can go ahead and create your own. A lot of you already have programs in place where you may be doing this more manually. So we're going to put reasons for changes that the reinspector may make. So example, you know, deductible, incorrect deductible. It could be a missing deductible. With regards to the diagramming, maybe it's an incorrect height, ceiling height, or incorrect diagram period, something more general. So all of these will now be available to the reinspectors when they get a claim and they are going to go ahead and do the reinspection process. Anything you put in here is going to flow down directly to the reinspectors. Now let's go to the home tab and actually kind of show you how a reinspection assignment is done. It's very simple. If you'll notice here, I have a claim called Brian West 
I'm going to open up this claim. And the one thing that has to be common in this is that the diagram and the estimate have to be locked down, meaning they have to be marked as complete. It has to be, obviously, because in order to go through and do a reinspection, that estimate uh, has to be locked down and can't be modified by two people at the same time. Assigning a reinspection is very simple. When I click Assign this claim over here, I have the ability now to go through and select any one of the adjusters I want to. And again, a lot of this can be done in your system as well and pulled over via the API. So in this case, George Gruden happens to be the reinspector I'm going to assign to, and I actually can create the assignment called reinspection. This will then send this directly to George Gruden. He will be notified of this, again, depending on how he set his notifications up. He might get a text message, he might get an email. My phone just rang, by the way, because I'm set up as George Gruden. And now that a reinspection assignment has been created. You'll notice again, both of these assignments, especially the roofing one by Jim Colburn was already finished, but now we have a reinspection assignment that's sent to George Gruden. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to George Gruden and we're gonna take a look at what that looks like. So I'm inside of mobile claims now, I've changed hats and I am now George Gruden. And old George was driving along in his vehicle going to another inspection or reinspection or something and all of a sudden his phone buzzed and he saw he had a text message that he was receiving a reinspection. So he's going to open up his mobile claims and he's going to go do his synchronization. Now, as you all know that when you synchronize, what you are going to receive is any new assignments and of course any updates that's been sent out to that claim or to the system. So any of those updated maybe uh, inspection uh, reasons for changes are going to be pushed down as well. So sure enough, here's my new, ins my new inspection right here, Brian West. And now I can take that, acquire the ownership of that, and I can do the reinspection on that. Now, I've got set up in here three different claims. And this is a new one, Brian West, but I also have one that's already complete, and I've got one that I've already started a reinspection on. And so we're gonna kinda walk through and I'm gonna show you what some of these look like. That way you can kinda get an idea of, of how it's set up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into one that I've already got, and that's the Harvey Stingman claim. I'm gonna open this up, and you're going to immediately begin to see what a reinspection view of a claim looks like. So if you'll notice over here, the Claim Explorer is on the right side. I happen to put my Claim Explorer on the right side, but as you know, you can put it anywhere you want. And you'll notice now there's a new node called Quality Connect. So this will come down and be available and to be viewable by the reinspector. Now you'll notice when I click on there, we have an actual uh, panel that opens up that's going to show all the changes. And of course, so far we haven't done any reinspection changes for this module. It's just existing here. But this is what you see at the beginning of this. Now I'm just gonna minimize this and we're gonna access that later. So one of the first things I would do when I came into a claim is I would probably wanna go take a look at the audit report. Most reinspectors would like to take a look at the audit report because it gives them a pretty good history of what was done and if they would also be able to see, by the way, if that adjuster had maybe already viewed and made some changes. So we can see here we've got a couple of things. We have a, a closet. When I click on here, we notice that, okay, we have an issue. They have a closet here, but there's no doors or openings in there. We have a chimney. It's going to give us the same thing. This adjuster happened to use a room to create the chimney instead of a, um, uh, like a block, which probably he should have used, so we can identify that. And I can go down and take a look at some other things. We have an issue here. When I click on this, it looks like the material portion of the three-tab fiberglass shingles was changed. Okay, so we see that and go down and we can see it. Now this is also interesting, by the way. We see that there's two roof sections here and one here. That seems to indicate that maybe there's a problem with the diagram. So you can get a lot of uh, understanding of what's already happened in that estimate just by going to the audit report and getting a better look. So let's actually go in and take a look at, let's start with a floor plan. Now, if you'll notice the floor plan is locked down and I can open it up and I can begin to look at it. And sure enough, I can identify right in the middle that I have a closet, but there's no opening to it. So we, we're, they're missing a door opening. Now, maybe I'm gonna access the diagram or the pictures and I'm gonna see that opening or whatever it is, but I can actually now go ahead and, and begin my reinspection and documenting these changes. Now, the way I would do that, by the way, is instead of actually just making a change here, I would simply right-click on the floor plan and 
click on the Quality Connect Reinspect. Now what it does, it's going to make a duplicate of the floor plan here. I'll minimize this. So you see now we actually have a reinspection floor plan. And now what I can do is I can go in here and I can say put in that door. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Uh, so I've got the door set up. Now the difference is when I go to the, this floor plan, no door. When I click on this floor plan, I'll minimize this again, there's the door. So I've actually made a change already inside of here. I put the door in and what it's doing is it's tracking it um, totally separately. So you can actually, you're not modifying the original, you're simply making the changes and it's documenting those changes. Now something of note here before we go any further, these nodes where it says Quality Connect, all the Quality Connect nodes that are coming in, all of these are going to be totally invisible to the adjuster. So even if this claim is currently in process and maybe you've, you know, again, the diagram and the estimate's been locked down, even though that adjuster may look at it, they won't be able to see these because they're not a reinspector. So you can do these without them seeing that and that's good because you can then later share the results after it's been reviewed. So that's part of the process and we wanted to be able to make sure that that part was invisible uh, to the, the other users. So when I go back to this, uh, my Quality Connect here and I go to my reinspection, you notice I can see that the floor plan was changed and I'm starting to get now, uh, it's, it's starting to keep kind of a record of what's going on. Now I'm gonna go back over here to this and I'm gonna open this back up uh, because what I wanna do is I wanna actually document what I did. So it says the floor plan has changed. The system knows the floor plan changed because of course I put the door in, but I'm now gonna go ahead and I'm gonna list the reason why I did that. So in this case, it was a diagramming issue. So I'm gonna say uh, it was missing an opening. So I click on there and I now can go in and put some comments in. Now these comments could be free form random if I wanted or if you want, you can actually begin to build a quick list, right? So if I want to, I could go ahead and build a quick list of that common ones I need to put in. In this case, I'm just going to type in what was wrong. Um, the closet door was not taken out of the original uh, diagram. So we placed that in there and now I save that. So now I've made the change. I chose the type of reason, the category. I went ahead and put my comments in and we also have an area that you can put for improvements. This again, all these, are, these parts here are optional, but if I wanted to, I could go ahead and put this in there because again, this report can be shared with the adjuster. So in this case here, I could, I could again, choose one of my default ones or I could say something like, always check all rooms in the diagram to ensure that all openings have been taken out. And then I can go ahead and save that. So now it's tracking this and I'm beginning my process. I can then go ahead, of course, close it, minimize that, and I can continue working my way through. It'll do that with anything that you're inside of here, right? So if I want to, if I, maybe the island was too, uh, the island was too large and I, I narrowed that down, again, it's gonna track stuff like that. Maybe um, this uh, missing wall wasn't here, maybe it was really a door. So uh, if I want to, I can go ahead and, uh, go back in here, I can go ahead and take that missing wall out, I can add doors in, I can do all kinds of things inside of here because again, I have that capability. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't, I'm not limited by, um, you know, what I can do. I have the full control over this entire diagram because again, I've set it up to be so. All right, so I'll go back over here and I'll, I'll open this back up again. And you'll notice here the floor plan again was changed. In this case, I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say it was an incorrect wall measurement and I'm gonna say, um, the opening was not a missing wall. Okay, so you can see how I can track that. LL period, there we go. All right, I can track that. Now, we've been doing the diagramming so far, so let's go to the roof and let's take a look at that issue that we saw with the roof. So when I clicked on the roof plan, I noticed that it was actually coming up, the estimate was coming up as these two roofs were together, or at least two of them were, and one was not. Now this, is a, this can sometimes happen. This is evident that this has been attached correctly, 
but maybe we have a problem over here. So if I do a freeform rotate, I can see that this is our problem. When they put this little, uh, this little, um, well, I guess you call this a half hip. When you put that half hip on there, they didn't tuck it all the way into the to the actual uh, diagram. Now, it's not a super problem. They still got the estimate done, but in this case, if I want to change it, I can go ahead and and automatically again create my another uh, another roof plan. Let me do it this way. Sorry, I'm going to go ahead and create this. So there's my roof plan now. And now what I can do is I can go ahead and make changes to this. I can tuck this in there where it belongs, and I can now go ahead inside of here. Let's just open this up again, and I can go ahead and make the note here. So in this case, again, we had a diagramming, I'll just say incorrect diagram, um, half hip first story was not connected correctly to the house. So. You can go ahead and, and add stuff like that. Again, it tracks the whole thing. And again, any time you want to, you can add something for improvements, right? So I could go in here and say, hey, um, make sure to always do freeform rotate and ensure that the diagram has been correctly, all elements of the roof diagram have been connected correctly, something like that. All right, now let's talk about the actual estimate itself. So if we note over here, when I click on the structural estimate, I can now go in here and I can see the entire estimate. Now this is where you can make changes and you can see where there may be mistakes and such. So if I go down here and I'm looking through here, I can see different things that I might want to address. Now, I, if let's for instance say I wanted to add something, like for instance here, we, you notice we have, we have carpet pad here and it was good and the wall-to-wall -wall carpet was good. If I wanted to say change something here or maybe there was something missing, like maybe uh, instead of three and a quarter base molding, maybe it was two and a quarter or something like that. All I would need to do is go back into the floor plan and I can go ahead and make that modification, right? So I can open up my items, I can find the items I want to add and add it. So in this case, let's go ahead and do that. So let's find our moldings. Let's find, uh, let's do our let's do two and a half inch combination. We're going to go tear out and replace. And I'll pull it in. You know, I just realized it. I forgot what uh, what room that was in. Let me take a look at that again. I'll go back to the estimate here and take a look. I think I was going to do it in the bedroom. Okay. All right. So I'll go back over here. So I'm going to go tear out and replace. I'm going to pull it into the bedroom and drop it. And now I've got it in there. Now, obviously, that's going to that's going to want to track that, and it's going to say, sure enough, two items have changed. So in this case, I, they, because they were the related items that I put in, I can now go ahead and combine them together and state what it is. So in this case, we'll say estimate items were missing. Um, molding was two and a half inch. And then I could save that. Now, in the case like this, when we put something like that in, Obviously, what I want to do is I also want to go in and I want to take those other ones out because what it's going to do is I'm modifying this estimate as I'm working through it, right? So I can take that those other items out of there uh, that were not that should not have been included, and then what it's going to do is it's going to track those changes, right? So I'm going to take these out right here. I'll delete them out. And now you'll notice if I go back over here to the to the reinspection. Uh, node that's going to have the summary, it's actually now going to track what the impact of that on the actual estimate itself. So in this case, when I took those items out, the three and a quarter, it, it took off $241.22 of the net estimate, and when I added the two and, uh, two and a half, it added this amount. So you can see that it's actually going to give you and track the impact on the estimate both from a net, by the way, and an absolute area, right? And we do it by both dollar amount and uh, the actual percentage of the impact. So obviously the absolute variance is going to be the total impact of the dollar, not on the bottom line, but the actual overall change that was made. So in this case, so far we've done over $731, basically $732 of overall change, but the net impact on the estimate is 250 bucks. So it's going to track that as well. Because, and that's important, by the way, because if we only track the impact on here, maybe you would not know the significance of the mistake that the adjuster made. 
And you need to know what that impact is because that's important when you're tracking that down. So in this way, we can go through and we can track and change things. Now, the, you'll notice we've done diagrams. We've done also in the estimate. The other area you have the ability to do is changes inside the loss summary. Now, the loss summary, of course, for most customers is going to come in and it's going to be uh, pulled from your, via your API, but sometimes there can be a change that needs to be made. Maybe, for instance, there should have been a $1,000 deductible here versus the 500 So you can change things like this, and you can, uh, of course, track that and, uh, and modify those things. So in this case, sure enough, the loss summary, it says this. So in this case, I'm going to say incorrect deductible. I can say changed deduct deductible from 500 to 1,000 per policy. And then I can save that. So these are the three areas that you can modify and change, and again, it's going to track all of that. That, of course, will impact the bottom line of the claim as well uh, from, a, from the perspective of the, uh, the net payable on that claim. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and actually um, mark this, this uh, assignment as complete, the reinspection. I'm going to say okay. I'm going to just get rid of that one. And let's see. Oh, sorry, hold on. Let me go back and do this. This is another thing, by the way. If you have not given a reason for one of your changes, it's going to actually prompt you, and it's going to want it's going to want to follow that. So let's take a look and see which one I did. Here we go. Base molding, and I'm going to just say uh, estimate item duplicate. We'll just call that. Here we go. So I'll put that in there. And by the way, when you're looking at this, you can either hide the item details or include them. And you can only, if you want to just look at the ones that you've done for your actual, uh, in this case, this node, in this case we're doing the estimate, you can go ahead and actually view just those as you're working through it. So the inspector has the ability to be able to change that uh, and view that depending on what they want to look like. So this, this quality connect uh, track changes area is really uh, nice and functional that way. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark this assignment as complete. There we go. And then I'm just going to go ahead and close this and then upload this back. Now, you probably want to know, you've seen that. It's pretty clear how that works and what it looks like and how it's set up. But what I'm going to also do now is show you what it looks like inside of Claims Connect. We've got a couple minutes left, and we'll, we'll show you what, how to review that inside of Claims Connect. So I've got one that I've already completed uh, for a guy named Gerald McCormick. So this is the insured. So in this case, it's, a re, it's, a, it's of course, a reinspection that was used by Quality Connect. Now, you, you will note, over here, you do not have the ability to see the Quality Connect here because you don't need to see that. You can actually view it in the form that you most, most want to view that, and that is to actually see the reinspection itself. So in this case, you'll notice I have a print profile set up as reinspection, and I can go ahead and now just look at the reinspection part of it. So you would, you would view it typically this way. I'll expand this and let you see what it looks like. So this is what the reinspection report looks like. Again, it's going to, it's going to ch uh, kind of show it by the different categories. So in the loss summary, you notice in this case the contents limit was changed. Uh, we can see in the floor plan that there was an di uh, incorrect diagram, the missing door in the laundry room. We can see that the floor plan was changed and the impact it had. So we can track that. We can even see the structural estimate, what was done here. In this case, uh, it was an estimate item price correction. The price was changed back to the original price, database price. So in this case, the adjuster must have changed the price for some reason. We can also see, by the way, in this case, that there was an estimate item incorrect grade selection. All roofs replaced should have a minimum 30-pound felt per new building codes, regardless of the type of felt removed. So in this case, it was a correction that way. And then the final you're going to see is you will now see the results, the total. So the total additions, 772.05, total subtractions, one, and of course the original total was this much, the new total, and then it has the net variance. And then of course it carries over to the absolute variance and the net error and the absolute error and all it's going to be there. You'll also notice the reinspector has the ability to put comments at the end. In this case, uh, they just put general comments about the, about the reinspection. Most of the issues were in the estimate. 
uh, roofing felt, the overall solid estimates, see my comments, whatever. So this report now is going to be available to then be sent to the adjuster if you want to. And most importantly, all this data is now inside of Claims Connect. And all that data can be then taken into business intelligence. And now across all claims, you can begin to generate reports that will be able to allow you to be able to see how your adjusters are doing, to be able to help you see how what your reinspection program is finding. And of course, from that data, you'll be able to make better decisions and uh, uh, be able to then address those uh, issues of indemnity leakage in a more accurate way. So that is the that is the Quality Connect tool. Again, I know it's a high level, but that's what these are designed for, is to kind of give you a handshake introduction to them. And uh, if we've got, I think we have maybe a minute left, Tucky, uh, did any questions come in? Actually, we're over time already. Let's try to take one question. Tucky, did any questions come in that we can answer? No questions? All right. Well, I'm sure there'll be some down the line. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, we've run out of time. So if you're a current Simility customer and you're interested in finding out more about any of the things that we spoke about today, just go ahead and call your account representatives. Uh, and if you're not a current Simability customer and you want to find out more about this tool and other related tools that we have, all you have to do is contact, again, sales at simbilitysolutions.com. So again, thanks everybody for joining me today. Uh, watch your email inboxes for invitations for more webinars such as today's. And if I don't talk to you before, have a wonderful week and a great holiday season. Take care.